Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, this is the one we've all been waiting for. We're going to be processing Jeff Williams' super rich sample bags that he sent up from Nevada on a collab that we did here a few weeks ago. So let's dig into these. I'm looking for specimen gold, I'm looking for visible gold, and then all the finds and stuff we're going to process through, melt down into a nice big old gold button. So let's see what we can find in these bags. So I've been putting a lot of thought into how to process these bags because the specimens are going to be one of the more important things that we're looking for because they're worth a lot more money when you have golden quartz like that and you just don't want to crush up some of those beautiful beautiful specimens. So the first thing I'm going to do is screen it through a half inch screen so we can get the, the core stuff on top and we'll go through that and see if we can find any specimens. Let's see how this goes here. I want to make sure I get all that dust because there's gold in that dust too. So here's a look at the oversized stuff. And this is where you're going to be looking for your specimen gold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and lay this out on a sheet of plywood and we can go over it with a metal detector. And then if that doesn't work or we don't get any hits from that, oh look, here's one. See that right there? It's all gold sitting down in that little pocket. So it's working. But let me get this stuff screened. Like I say, we'll lay it out on a sheet of plywood. And we'll see what we can find with the metal detector. I've got some specimens laid out here on this little table. I'm going to try and go over them with this white metal detector. This thing's probably an antique at this point. It's about 15, 18 years old. Uh, so I don't know how, how good it's going to do. You won't be able to hear it because of all the rain on the tent right now. But we'll see if I can just kind of listen here and pick anything out. So yeah, I can actually hear a very, very faint signal from some of these. So I'm going to spread out all that stuff I screen and see what I can find in that stuff. I'm going to try and get the camera down here by the by the speaker, the metal detector. But I don't really. I've gone over a little bit. I just don't hear any signals. I feel like there's something right in there, maybe. There's nothing screaming at me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this stuff and uh, wash it in a little bit of water, get it wet, and then I'll just hand pick through it and see what I got. So I want to try and show you up close here some of the specimens I've been finding. There's gold. There's gold. There's a big old chunk hanging off. There's some gold. There's a nice piece. This one's got some nice pieces in it. More gold. More gold. Gold. So we're getting some pretty darn nice specimen pieces out of this stuff from Jeff Williams. And there's a piece that actually fell off sitting there in the on the pan that I found. So nice specimen stuff. I got our stuff all wet here and I'm gonna put the samples with gold in here and the rest in here that we can crush up later. But you can see the difference here when they're all wet. You can see them a whole lot better. Let's see if I can get a... Oh yeah, see? <laughs> I can get it focused. See right there on my finger? There's gold all across there. That one's big enough. I'm actually going to break that one up with a hammer. See if there's more inside there. But I'm just going to go through this whole bucket here. and If I find something really good, I'll let you know. Well, I went through most of our bucket, and I really didn't find much. There was a few here 
that had some, a little bit of gold. There we go. Down in there. This is probably the best one. Actually, the first rock I pulled out right there. I'll, I'll try breaking this one open, see if there's anything else. That one's got some gold showing there. But there just wasn't anything as fantastic as the stuff I have in the pan that I showed you earlier. Well, these are most of the prime specimens we got out of Jeff's stuff. And stay tuned for a future video where I do some experiments on the best way to clean up some of these samples. Get that gold nice and shiny and get all that rust and discoloration off of there. We're going to take our samples here. I'm going to mix them together so the wet stuff goes in with the dry stuff and hopefully that helps us kind of dry it all out. We're going to crush it down to about a quarter inch minus through a jaw crusher so then we can put it through a little grinder and get it all pulverized. Well, now we're going to use this little disc grinder, and this plate is stationary, and this plate turns. And there's a little slot right there, and that's where all the stuff's going to come out. I'm going to feed it down through here. Let's come out the bottom as powder into our catch basin there, aka trash can lid. So let's get this stuff ground up, and we'll see how much gold we got. Man, I'm glad that's over with. That little thing there really wasn't designed for production or anything like that. We ran half a bucket through it, so it took a little while. But uh, I don't know if you saw in the video, I was wearing a respirator. That silica is really nasty stuff, as well as I don't know if there's lead in there or zinc or anything else. So you really don't want to be breathing that stuff. And here's the stuff that came through that little crusher. It came out really nice. I think what I'm going to do is do a little test pan. And then there's enough here where I'm just going to go run it on our shaker table. Or I'm just going to take, I don't know, there's a full handful. And let's do another one. Well, a smaller one. There we go. I'll pan that out and see what we got in there. The rest will run on the shaker table. All right, well, here is our pan of the two handfuls there. One and a half handfuls. And look at that. So, I've had a couple pans of this stuff now, and I've gotten maybe less googly-eyed about it, about all that yellow. But I, have, I actually have a little bit of a concern here, because see how the gold bounced right up here to the corner? Let me show you. So there's all, all our metallic gold pieces right up there in the corner. There's probably some down in here as well. But I have a concern that this is not actually gold. It looks like gold. It's, it's dense. But I don't think it's as dense as gold. There's a little bit of orange stuff in there mixed. And so, don't get me wrong, this is still an extremely rich little one and a half handfuls. But I think we might actually have another mineral here that's yellow and very dense. And what I'm going to try and do is I've got a little microscope. So let's see if I can get the microscope set up. And we can look at this stuff down here and this stuff up here and see if we can tell the difference. 
The other thing I'm going to do is while we're running the rest on the shaker table, I'm going to get this in the furnace in a cupel and figure out, you know, this should be, I don't know, lots. But let's cupel this down and see if most of this goes away and we're left with, with a smaller bead. But there's no doubt that a lot of that stuff up there is gold. A little bit white in color. It's not super, super yellow, so it probably has some silver in with it. But let me figure out what we got here. Let's look at the microscope. Now I've got it kind of mixed up, and gosh, it's really hard to tell the difference. There's some of that metallic gold here, and then the yellow stuff all around it. There's two minerals I'm thinking this might be. There's a, a tungsten mineral that's called shelite that is very, very dense, and it's hard to tell the difference when you pan it. And there's some other lead sulfides, or I'm sorry, lead oxides that are yellow and very dense. Interesting. Well, we're looking down the microscope, and there's those three or four big blobs of gold. There's a huge one off to the right. And then all that other stuff isn't gold. It's it's some sort of other mineral. Uh-oh, where'd you go? There we go. It's some sort of other mineral that's obviously quite dense and yellow, but it's not gold. So that is very interesting. We got fooled, Jeff. I thought all that yellow in the pan was gold. Man, I've seen a lot of gold too, and that's that's really hard to distinguish. Shelite is, is kinda one of the ones that is really hard to distinguish because it's so dense and it's yellow like that. But man, oh man, I got fooled. We still got gold, so that's good. But let's get this sucked out and put in the furnace and see what we got. Because now I'm, I'm quite sure that not all that yellow in the pan is gold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a snuffer bottle and I'm just gonna suck as much of this stuff out of here as I can Yell everything that's yellow is going. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to suck it all up and we're going to cupel it all down to just pure precious metals. So, this has worked really well for me in the past. I've got all our stuff down in the snuffer bottle there, and so I want to get it out and dry it out for the cupel. So I take the straw out of the snuffer bottle, I turn it over, get all the good stuff down the bottom, and then just leak it down into a pile in this shop towel. And look at it all. Man, I wish all that was gold. So look at that. I mean, even, even here, that looks just like a pile of gold to me. Little black sand in there, but that looks like a, a bunch of gold. That'd be like a quarter of an ounce. But I'll keep working all this stuff down. Now I take my towel here. Got all my gold down the bottom. Well, all my, all my, I got all my yellow stuff down the bottom. And I just make kind of a little packet out of it. And I squeeze as much water out as I can. And just get it as dry as possible. I just take my scissors. I cut off all the extra. And there's our little packet I'm going to put in the furnace with the cupel. And a little bit of lead. And it'll get refined down to gold and silver. Okay, what do we got here? We got our... Cupel heating up there. I'm going to add our little gold packet. Add in some lead with that. One, two. We'll let that get up to temperature and we'll check on it a little bit. Well, now I'm going to take all of our panning tailings, all of the dust we made with our little crusher, 
I'm going to get it all wet. I'm going to mix it together, stir it with a paint stirrer so it all gets moistened, wettened, and we'll run it on our shaker table to get the gold and all that yellow stuff out. All right, now we have a real nice slurry. We can add that right on the shaker table. And probably what I've done is I've mixed it so all the gold is right down at the bottom now. Well, a quick little overview here. Here's the four by eight shaker table we're gonna run the stuff on. The gold's gonna come across here, up this first or second long groove, and under the water bar here, up on what we call the cleaning plane, and come down into the number one port the sulfides, maybe some of that yellow heavy stuff that's not gold will come into the number two port. There's a number three port middlings and a number four port tailings. And if this stuff wasn't so stinking rich, I would have just run it right through the hammer mill. But you can't really get that thing completely clean and I didn't want to hang up any of Jeff's gold in that hammer mill. So that's why we use that little grinder. But I got that blue bucket there. I'm going to feed it into this trough and we'll run it down on the shaker table and see what we get. Oh yeah, I'm just going to scoop it out of there and dribble it along this distributor trough here. And there again, usually what happens when you mix this stuff with a paint stirrer is that all the gold goes down to the bottom. And so there's not a lot to see in the first half of the bucket here. But I'll get this stuff going on the table. Check back in a minute. Now I've stopped feeding the table for a minute, but you can see yellow feeding down into the grooves. There's some of the yellow orange here that's starting to come across. I don't see any starting to make its way up across yet. But I just noticed that yellow coming down, it just all comes down and bloop right in that first trough. So it'll start working its way. Yeah, you can see some there. It's just working its way across, and that'll be a pretty nice showing. Hopefully a lot of it's gold. Well, we're pretty much done with our sample, and you can see all the yellow up here. And I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but a lot of it now is orange. And I think that's that lead or tungsten mineral. But the gold's working its way out here now. And I can adjust the water a little bit to get it to move over, but it's starting to go up under the water bar. Hard to tell when it's shaking. But it's just working its way across, just like it's supposed to. I'm probably gonna brush it down just to help it get over there and get on its way. I don't wanna stand out here in the rain for hours waiting for the gold to come across the table. So let me get it brushed down and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, we'll start all the way back over here. And just get everything coming this way. And there you go, you can start to see all that stuff separate out here, hopefully once it gets up onto the cleaning plane. Let's get it all up here and see what it looks like. shut the table off so we can see. Okay, we'll get a real good look at this stuff now. There's a lot of gold right at the leading edge here. And then the stuff behind it's a little bit orange. But kind of give you a, a zoom out picture of what we got. Lots of gold up here at the leading edge. Working our way down, you can start to see the flakes now. Individual, and they're just working their way right down into the number one. A few bigger pebbles and stuff, at the bottom of the bucket. But man, it's too bad that's not all gold. You can kind of see it there. 
it looks like just incredibly fine gold. But we'll get it down and we'll get it smelted down and see what we can make out of it for Jeff. Well, here's the number one panned out and holy cow, it just looks like gold all over. There's some bigger pieces up here in the in the corner of the pan, or the crease of the pan. Well, I'm a little bit at a loss of what to do with this stuff. I don't really know what that yellow stuff is. We got lots of gold in here I want to recover. So I say, when in doubt, let's smelt it down. All right, well, I've never really done this before. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. I want to... What am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see if I can wash this. Down into this rag. Is it working? I guess it's working. Okay. Kind of like what we did with the earlier stuff. I'm just going to get in a shop towel like that, get the water out of it, and then figure out what to do with it. Okay, we're going to pull out our panning button here. This is from the couple of handfuls I did. Nice button. But that's from the one and a half handfuls. We'll see if we can watch it blick over. There we go. Nice little blick there. So let that cool down and we'll get it weighed. Here's our really nice looking little gold bead from the handful and a half we panned. Let's figure out what it weighs. A little less than half a gram. Half a gram from a handful and a half. But I would say based on the color there, it's it's gold, but it's not that nice yellow gold. It's probably in that 75, 80, 80% 80 range. Real nice little bead though. Let's see what happens from the rest of it. So if we estimate that I panned about two pounds or a kilogram and we got half a gram from it that's 500 grams a ton or I don't know what is that almost 20 ounces a ton 16 18 ounces a ton pretty rich stuff well I'm gonna throw all caution and science to the wind here I'm just gonna grab some borax, put it in the bottom. I'm going to take take our, <laughs> our our ball here. Cut off all the extra we don't need. Problem is it's still pretty wet. But get all that out of there. That's just going to burn up. We've got let's See what it looks like in there. There it is. So I'm going to dump that in this crucible. Oh, maybe I'll do this. I'll dump a little bit in. Put some more borax in. I'll kind of mix it as I go here. Plop the whole thing in there. <laughs> this is just bush league here. More borax on top. I, I believe, I, I, I expect it's a, an oxide, so I'm gonna add lots of borax. I may throw some soda ash on top. There should be plenty of gold in there to collect itself into a button at the bottom. All the oxides and all the junk should be absorbed by the borax when it melts. And we'll pour it in the cone mold and see what we get. This is, this is uh, new territory for me. <laughs> we'll call it Bush League smelting.
All right, well, let's see what we have here. Black, black looking slag. Kind of a brown tinge to it, actually. Let's see if we've got a little gold nugget here in the bottom. Ah. That is lead, I believe. And it's still kind of gooey. So I'm trying to cool it off here with water. So I can break it out of there. I wasn't expecting a bunch of lead because I didn't put any in, but I'm wondering if, yeah, see there? I'm wondering if that yellow stuff is some sort of lead sulfide or lead oxide actually. Because we got some lead here. Well, we got our lead here. Let's figure out what it weighs. I don't know if it's my imagination, but this feels a lot heavier than it should be if it was just lead. Sixteen and a half grams. So I'm going to add our lead bead right to the cupel. I'm not going to add any extra lead. And we'll check on it and see. We'll see what it looks like here in a couple minutes. And if I need to add any lead, I, I can do so. But I think there's plenty of lead in that button. The lead has just started to oxidize. And the oxides are molten now. It's hard to get a good shot of it. It looks like raindrops on the surface. So the lead's being absorbed into the cupel and it'll just leave gold. Oh yeah, let's see what we got here. There's our gold bead. There's our nice little gold button from the stuff that I ground up, ran on the shaker table. I forgot to get the weight on camera, but that stuff weighed 32 pounds altogether. Pull it off, Whoop. but there she be, still a little bit hot, ow. And it's not that super yellow color, it's definitely got some silver in it. But let's see what we got for a weight. 6.4 grams. All right, well doing some math, 32 pounds is right around 14 and a half kilograms. And taking that weight in grams turns out to be about 450 grams per ton, which squares almost exactly with the estimated pan we did at two at one kilogram. We got about 450, 500 grams a ton. So that squares. But judging by the color here, we're going to call it 80% or so. So instead of 450 grams per ton, it's about 360. Or what is that, about 12 ounces a ton? So that's not too bad, Jeff, 12 ounces a ton. Oh, and actually, you know, thinking on the fly here, uh, all the gold in these specimens came out of the same spot. There's hardly any weight there, and there's quite a bit of gold. So you might be looking closer at 15 ounces a ton or somewhere in there if you include the weight of the gold in these specimens. So pretty good, Jeff. Thanks again for the trip. I had a blast, got some gold, and met some awesome people. Well, there you go, Jeff. There's 12 to 15 ounces a ton stuff. That's pretty darn good rock you got there. I think you got yourself a gold mine. But I wanted to say a special thanks to you for inviting me down. I had a blast getting down there, mining that gold, met a lot of fun people, and uh, I hope we can do it again sometime. So thanks again. And for anybody else out there, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can leave me a comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.